much. Now let's <laughs> let's be let's be serious. Reality. Okay. What is titan? Titan. Are we there? Carry your book and your pen. People who goes to church are the people who carry pen and book, not the people who carry the whole big Bible. Praise God. Titan is part of something. It's part of something that we volunteer. Contribution. We call it voluntary. Contribution like task. Especially for the support of a religious what establishment. That's a general meaning of Titan. I say Titan is also called tent. It's part of something and as a what voluntary contribution or as tax, especially for the support part of a religious what establishment that's a definition of the way unbelievers put it they know is a task they pay task true i'll give you another one which is the biblical meaning a tithe is a fixed amount of any income that comes to us, which is 10% or more, giving regularly, depending on how your income comes, weekly, monthly, or yearly. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen, very well, listen. Biblical meaning of Titan, I said, is a fixed amount of money fixed amount 10 percent or more giving regularly in order to support a priest a church and a charity least you know not tomorrow you cut one side and say this pastor He's only talking this side. This side, this side, this side. He's a thief. If I, hmm, I hear you, I print your picture. If I finish with you, you know you do the whole video and show to the public. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, biblical meaning. A tithe is a fixed amount, fixed cash of money, 10% or more, given regularly in order to support a priest, church, or what? Charity. Supporting a priest with your 10% goes long way. Supporting the church with your 10% goes another long way. Supporting charity, which is love, also goes a long way. But the question is, that is very simple. In the charity you give, who is praying for you? The priests are praying for you. The church is praying for you. If you give it to the charity that is not connected to the priest and to the church, we will pray for you. So the first two part is to give to the priest, to support the priest. To give to the church, to support the church. To give to the charity. My question is, who will pray for you? He said, take all the money, give it to charity. All the people that give up to charity organizations that don't serve God. Do their children get blessed? Their children don't get blessed. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It is not for charity at first. It is for the priest. It is for the church. Then the charity. 
you must give charity through the help of the church. Every church must have a charity. So you give to the church charity as the same for them to pray for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Tithing is a covenant. It's not just 10% of your money. Tithing is a covenant, not 10%. Tithing is a what? Is a covenant, not 10%. You know why it's a covenant? God does not take your 10% first. God takes you first. For God so loved the world, he gave Jesus. That was his own percentage to human. God's percentage to human was more than 10%. He said, I give you, you give me. He gave us Jesus to take our soul, to come to him. So Jesus was the tithe of God for we to serve him. He said, God, does not need our tithe. Hey, shut up. God does. Life is give and take. So God gave us Jesus as a tithe offering to take you to his kingdom. So you can't say, no, no, even God does not. He, God loves tithe. He gave you Jesus so that your soul can be one to him. So life is about give and take. Everyone in this world is in a spirit realm. It's either you are in the darkness of the devil or you are the light of God. There is no one who stood up to greatness without a covenant. So Titan is a covenant. Titan is not your 10%. It's the covenant of your 10%. Praise God. But how do I make the covenant work? I must give myself. I must give myself. Myself? Why must I give myself? A sinner can't tithe. It's for believers. So God said, I can't take your tithe. Mm? Give me your soul. Give me your life first. So you have the covenant of your life with God, then your 10% seals it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your 10% is not what God is looking for first. He's looking for the covenant between both of you. Then your 10% is an assurance of your covenant. So how can a sinner give tight? No, he's a righteous man, a believer. He gives tight to God. She gives tight to God. But she didn't just give the tight to God. She had a covenant. He had a covenant. The covenant is giving your life to Christ. That's the first covenant, your salvation, that is being given to Christ. You get my point? So that is simple. So tithing is not something you are willing. It's a commandment. It's a law. Are you getting my point? What are the scriptural references? We have the book of Genesis 14.20. Write it down. You see it. Hebrews 7.6. Leviticus 27.30. Scriptural references. Genesis chapter 14, verse 20, Hebrews 7, 6, and Levite. Sorry, Leviticus. But let's start with the New Testament, Hebrews 7, 6. Hebrews 7, verse 6. But he who descent is not counted from them. He said, received tight of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises tight in. 
It's not the Old Testament. This one is the New Testament. But he whose descent is not counted from them. He said they received what? Tithe. Of Abraham. And blessed him that had the promises. God does not need your tithe first. He needs you. So you who is not yet a believer, so I'm not going to die. No, you must have the covenant of God to start paying tight. I've seen people when my father in the Lord said, they call him, Papa the Papa. He said, Thank you. <laughs> he checked. He said, Is this my son tightening with us? He said, No matter how small, does he give? The day he comes, you tell him, Papa, Papa. He said, My friend, keep your papa to yourself. I'm not your papa. Because you are calling a man father, you are so ignorant that you don't pay any tithe to him every month. You are not a son. <laughs> eh? You've not told us who you are following. Tithing is a connection to your father. Even the Bible said, mortal man is the person who takes the tithe. Not God. So when we get to that part, I'll show you where the Bible said it's mortal human being. God can't come down to take it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm? The scriptural references Moses and Abraham paid to what? A great man in the Bible called Melchizedek. That's in the book of what? Genesis 14, 20, Hebrews 7, 6. Are you understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you the Bible references. Jacob vowed unto the Lord. He said, if you give me, Lord, I will surely tithe to you. So tithing can also be used as a covenant from God. And taking from God. Father, if you give me this job, I will pay my tithe. It's a covenant. Father, if you give me a wife, if you give me a husband, I will pay my tithe. It's a covenant. So Isaac, sorry, Jacob vowed unto the Lord. He said, if you give me, I will what? I will tithe to you. You don't have, you don't work. No need for tithing. But you are looking for a job, you must tithe. That's a covenant. That's a what? That's a covenant. You must, you must tithe. Praise God. Hallelujah. And for some of you who are just coming, we are talking about tithing. Before you judge Titan, please sit down and look and listen. Hmm? In the name of Jesus. What's wrong with all these things? Gadget and its problem. Praise God. Sorry. Oh. The Bible have refused to talk. <laughs> Devil, you can't distract me. Let's hold it like this. Keep sharing. Keep what? Keep sharing. Praise God. I continue with the reference of Titan. Moses and Abraham tied to Melchizedek. That's in the book of Genesis 14, 20, Hebrews 7, 6. And also Jacob also vowed to the Lord, if you give me, I will surely tithe. 
to you. Praise God. Look into the book of Leviticus 27, verse 30 to 32, because of time. Number 18, 26 to 28, because of time, study that on your own. Then Deuteronomy 12, verse 5. Deuteronomy 12, verse 6. Verse 17. Verse 22. Verse 23. Write them down, study them. You see what I'm saying? Leviticus 27, 30 to 32, Numbers 18, verse 26 to 28, Deuteronomy 12, verse 5, 12, verse 6, 12, verse 17, chapter 14 and 22, and chapter 14 and 23. Study it. You'll see more references of people who tithe. Why tithing is money today? Some people say, My young man, must we tithe with money? Money, money, money. In the Old Testament, they tithed with fruit, fruit, fruit. Thank you, <laughs> English teacher. Ta thank you. They tithed with fruit. Why are we tithing with money? Are we in the component of it? It's because you are too poor. You are too old. You are too poor. So you are thinking where your 10% salary is going. Rich people don't think you are their 10%. They only know they are investing. Are you getting what I'm saying? The moment you know you are poor, you began to analyze. If that's to tell you you are stingy. Even when you give your woman money to buy food to cook, you ask how much is pepper? How much is salt? You are too poor. So you are looking for change. <laughs> That's, yeah, not the lack of money. It's lack of mentality. Poverty is not because you don't have money. You lack the mentality. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? If you know that you are not stingy, you will be analyzing Titan. Stingy people don't analyze Titan. Hey, the Bible said, the Bible said, why don't you tear away the Old Testament and let's only use the New Testament so that you'll be comfortable? Uh -uh. Tear the Old Testament, leave the New Testament so we don't talk about it. They will still bring it out in the New Testament because New Testament is also here. We'll talk about it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So rich people don't talk 10%. It comes with growth. Is here. Not here. If you think having 1 billion has made you grow, then you are too poor. Huh? One billion dollars does not make you rich. You are still poor upstairs. Great people are rich here. Poor people are rich with money. <laughs> so you are poor. I'm poor, no money. You are rich. Change your mentality. Change how you reason? Are you getting my point? You see poor people analyzing on other poor people. Say, ah, the guy, hey, hang on, the church is chief. That's where you were born. <laughs> huh? Why is tight in money today? And why is not farming? Fruit, plantain. <laughs> I want to ask you a simple question. Does the church use plantain? Or tuba of yam to build the house of God. Huh? Does the church of today do we use tuba of yam? We use good to build the church. <laughs> answer me now, professionals, people who condemn pastors, answer me. Do we use goat to build the house? Eh? We kill the goat, use the blood, and carry another goat, keep on top, carry another goat, keep on top, carry another goat, keep. <laughs> hey. 
What do you do? You need the money to buy block. True? We can't give titan with fruit because you're not a farmer. If you're a farmer, then bring your yam. <laughs> Are you a farmer? No. Bring yam. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Before you come on social media to talk nonsense, think well. Think well. Don't just grow with big breasts, big backside. Don't grow, have mustache, have six packs, and you lack sense. Your truth there. I wonder. They will be senseless. Shut up. You know nothing. You have no revelation about anything. Keep quiet. I pushed a young man yesterday. He said, This lady, oh, years ago, we asked that with her. I pushed him. I said, Get out. You are stupid. You slept with a woman. That's why you are telling another man, say, don't marry her. The past is gone. Huh? That's our mindset. Because we've done something. We'll not use it to spoil other people. Hey, Nigeria. Nigeria. There's no more shame in this our country. So why is money tight in today? Number one, no more farming of the people. No more farming. So as no more farming, do we need yam? We can't use yam to build the house of God. We need money. He said, why can't they open charity home for people that don't have sleep? They don't have yard to sleep. Will they sleep on top of animal? When you bring animal or fruit, the church needs money. No more famine. Second Chronicles 31, verse 5 and 2. No more famine. No more, no more. <laughs> For many thousand years. Yeah. So basically, you know, those type of songs are ancient songs. Of, I wasn't even, my father and my mother have not met each other when that song came out from Assemblies of God. No more, no more. <laughs> For many thousand years. Second Chronicle chapter 31, verse 5 and 2. Eh? Check that place because of time. No more famine of the people. Why tithing is money today? Number one, we don't farm anymore. Huh? We don't farm. You say, I'm farming. Let's go and buy him and give to the pastor. Thank you. We, we worship God outside the blocks. Let him beat us. <laughs> no. Huh? Why Titan is money today? Number two. Our century is more operated by money and not fruit. Huh? Fruit does not build us. Mm? Money builds us. Our century of today, we don't want to farm. Everyone is a master degree holder, PhD holder. He say, let's go do farming. He say, me? Graduate? No. Hey. Then now we have monkey jacket. <laughs> you tell me, family, you're, you're crazy. How can I farm? A, first class, PhD, will now go to do farming. Oh my gosh. As fair as I am, you want to stay me? Oh, no, 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 not too much. Farming is we have millions and billions of dollars. Yes. But in Africa, they are slave queen. <laughs> slave queen. <laughs> stay, even black woman wants to follow white. They say, you want to stay my black color? On your Zuzu. <laughs> my friend, we don't farm. Nobody wants to farm. Huh? So we need money for child building. Number three, white titan is money today. 
Why money? Why titan is money today? Number three, salary of church workers. You don't know it's church, they pay salary. <laughs> they don't call it salary, they call it allowance. Eh? They don't call it what salary, they call it allowance. But some people still call it salary. Church can't take fruit today because of we need to pay workers. We need to pay workers. Administration, you appreciate who is in charge. Security men, where would they eat from? <laughs> you see one cowboy who's going, hey, 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 hey. after securing the whole church, the whole night, in the morning there's no food. You now come and lay hand on his head. Ra -ba 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 -ba. Hey, stop that nonsense, my friend. Find your salary. Find that security man salary. Find him. Pay him well. Just as Jesus walk. <laughs> eh? Did Jesus did he do any security work? <laughs> Jesus at the gate in the night with touch light. You people should respect yourself. Oh. Pay the security man salary. There's nothing like church work. Pay security man salary. That's why we tight today. Wickedness is in some churches now. So pay security. In church, I can show you in the Bible. We had the Bible said, appreciate those people who works as a watchman over the church. Give them. Pay them. Pay them. Some pastors who take the money, enjoy their life with their children, leave church security. Hey, 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 stop that nonsense. Tell them no way. They should pay you. Except the church does not have. Eh? Except the church does not have the capacity to pay salary. You know you are doing it voluntarily. But the church is big cathedral. My friend, pay the security people. Pay them. Anyone who say they want it voluntarily, give them. Hmm? Including drummers in the church and keep all this. Ask them, do you want to be appreciated? Or do you want to voluntarily work for God? Anyone who wants to say voluntarily, God bless, pour the person oil. If they say they want money, give them if you have. There's no need for the church to be bantering back in. But you say the church is not a business place. The church is not a company. But you are using church fund. Hmm? Are you understanding what I'm saying? If the drummer said, I want to be paid. Give me money. He's not working. A drummer in a church that is not working needs to be appreciated. A keyboardist that is not working needs to be appreciated. Don't say it's the work of God is free. No. Pay them. When they start working from Monday to Saturday, you stop paying them. And everyone will smile. <laughs> ah, you understand what I'm saying? If I'm a drummer, as I used to be a drummer when I was small, before I became a very, 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 very Alessa. <laughs> when I became Alessa, I said, hey, Bella, you a bad boy? I said, I used to be a bad boy. What made you change? I said, I don't know. You will tell me? I said, no. <laughs> huh? A drummer who have no job. A keyboardist who have no job. The church should pay them. Cut this part. Go and tell them. <laughs> eh? No, no job. The church pay. The church should pay. And when they pay them, the church should also look for job for them so that they will stop paying them. That's a simple truth. Lord, don't connive, don't say, nah. 
Act 10. You're not working. Drum, you're not working. You want to do it voluntarily? Yes, sir. Keyboard, what about you, sir? I want to be appreciated. I have no job. Pay him. If you don't value people in the church, how will God value you as a pastor? If you don't value people in the church, how will God value you as a pastor? You must value people in the church of God. They are humans. We are all set to do evangelism. Praise God. Pay your admin. Pay your security. Pay your errand workers. Appreciate them with few coins. Hoodie. Don't tell them the Lord is good. They are hungry. Oh. They say the Lord is good. They will chop. They need food. Number four. Why tighten his money today? Evangelical outreach. Evangelical outreach. People who go for evangelism needs to eat dinner. You went to evangelist, my daughter. Oh, God bless you. No, pastor, no. Give them food. It's the reason why they are tightening. Give them food. Your back, other meal for them to eat. Give them water to drink. They are back home. They need to eat. The Bible said, I shall bring how many to the house of God. It said, I shall store it in the storeroom. So years ago, it was farming. They were bringing inside the storeroom. Now it's not farming, not fruit, not yam. Now it's money. They bring it to the storehouse. Give them money. Not telling them thank you, but feeding them. Don't say it's the work of your father. Yes. They voluntarily did it. Yes. Do you encourage them? You will. By prayer, not only prayer. By what? Giving them food. You are welcome. Huh? Give them food to chop. Make them chop. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. Number f is it number five? Why Titans is money today? Those are the four things I spoke about. Mm? No more farming of today, so that's why you pay your Titan money. Our century of today, we operate more with money than fruit in the olden days. Salary of church workers, security, etc. And number four, evangelical outreach for people who went to preach to eat. Eh? Poor children who couldn't eat in their house, they came to church hungry, give them food. It's only one of my sons that does that every Sunday. His name is Pastor Olushegu Opeyemi. Every Sunday they cook. They what? They cook. They give people in the church food. That's what the church is meant to do. To cook, to help the people. Praise God. Sorry, we're having a network issue. Hmm? His name is who? Pastor Olushegu. He's in Lagos. He's my son. Very humble man. He cooks every Sunday. After church, he shares the food for the people to eat. He's not telling you come and eat in the church. No. With the whole long service, he said, just don't go. Jesus did it. Those people were hungry. So Jesus can't preach with empty stomach. 
So you give them food to eat. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So give evangelical people food. After they go to preach and come back. Pastor, give them food. Let them chop. If there is no food you cook, tell mama to cook for them. If there is no gas for you to cook, share money for them. Eh? Are you getting what I'm saying? Better. The covenant of Titan. The covenant of Titan. The covenant of Titan and its reasons. Hmm? In the covenant of Titan, we have years of agreement with God. The period and the seasons with God. It's not just mentioning the years. Number one, we have the tithe of three years. That's in the book of Deuteronomy 26, verse 12 to 14. Tithing of three years. Now, due to famine in those days, if you plant a yam, yam does not grow in 24 hours. I think yam takes about five, six, seven months or nine months or by the ending of the year to grow. Now, the covenant of tithing is in three years. That they tithe to three years. Then after that time, they see the fruitfulness. Abraham practiced the tithing of two years. God now promised him of Isaac that took how many years? He continued the process to five years. God checked and said, oh, Abraham is still faithful. God extended it. Abraham continued to what? To 10 years covenant with God. And when God brought Isaac to Abraham, he now said, give me back what I've given to you. Because God wanted to continue his covenant with him. And to check his level of what? Capacity. So Abraham knew that Isaac was not the source of his prosperity that God was. So Abraham took Isaac. He said, come, let me give you back to God who gave me. Now, proving to God for God to know that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't ask any question. It's not your time. Are you getting my point? Now, God now said, oh, you obeyed me? He said, leave Isaac. This is Iran. Bear. Use it. Kill it. And sacrifice unto me. He cut short and left it for 10 years. That's why today we can see people say, Abraham, blessings are mine. Eh? I'm blessed in the morning. I'm blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. What did Abraham did? He tightened. Two years, five years, longevity of ten years. God said, Whoa, he became a blessed man to a nation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't pay tight for six months and say, Tithing does not come back as money. <laughs> he said, Babe, babe, we are too poor. A certain old prophet in this country who is from. The South South. He said, Titan is a scam. Why are we why are Nigerians not the richest people? It is because you have no revelation of what Titan is. Titan does not give you money. <laughs> if you are Titan because you want to be rich, no, it doesn't. That's why everybody's in a haste to tight and in a haste to cash out. God is not MMM, where you pay tight and cash out. No. There are varieties. Tight comes with benefit. I'll tell you. We are still going. So then I'm saying, I'm, I'm in my tight for four years. And I ask, huh? It's not money. I'll tell you. Praise God. You can't give and be empty. Tightening is never a scam. No matter how you analyze it. 
is because of poor mindset. You say tightening is a scam. How come God is helping me today? How come? He said, give and it shall be given unto you. I'm not working from any company. There's no guest sponsoring me. There's no woman helping me. It is God. So there's no you talking about uh, uh, this is scam. I said, God, this thing, this poverty in this family is, is strong. As the Bible said, give and it shall be given. I started giving through the teaching of my mother. Today, God is increasing my anointing. I, I say, tighten his scam. Hey, if he's scam, I choose to be paid. <laughs> that means God scammed Abraham. Stop listening to old prophet. Their job is to stop you on the road. Like they stopped the man in the Bible. He said, go! And they ran. And an old prophet stopped him. He said, God said, you should eat. <laughs> and he believed the prophet because that prophet was once relevant. That prophet was once in power. A man that carries 10,000 congregations telling you something from the scripture does not mean he's right. Discern what he said. To stay relevant is not to confuse the people. It's confusing yourself. Do I have a church? We are saying people are coming to pay tithe. That's why I'm preaching. I don't have a church. God say you will never have a church. I said, now you have <laughs> So who am I paying, preaching the tithe for? I'm telling you the truth. Nothing but the truth. I don't collect tithe from my source. The ones who pays me. Eh? Yes. The ones who pays me, I pray for them every day. Every week, I call them on the phone. I pray. The one who doesn't pay to, I pray. That one once in a while, if they, if they call me, I say, God, remember that one. No. It's tightening that connects you and the upper class. Not care. Not care center. It is tightening that connects you with the upper class. So if I'm here now, give to David Biome, he gets his money, his cash, his tight. God blesses from the higher to the lower. God can bless from the lower to the higher. He always bless from the man on the top and give to the man down. Hello? So I pay tight. God gives me his blessing. Must his blessing be money? No. I'll tell you. Hmm? So we have the covenant, the titan for three years. We have a titan for four years, five years, ten years. How do you mean, man of God? I'll tell you. When you have a covenant with God and say, God, if you give me this job, I will tight. The best way to have a longevity titan with God is not looking for the benefit, but putting your own part. Pay your own part. Proving that you are doing your own part. Your responsibility is to give. Your responsibility is not to supervise what they are doing with your tithe. Your job is to give, not to supervise. It is so stupid, jobless, and a cost for a man to investigate a church what they are using their tithe to do. It is foolish and it is a cause. You can't invest or try to investigate what God's people are doing with his money. You have no right. Just pay. Walk away. Huh? Do you sleep with your wife and when you come inside her, do you tear her stomach to investigate where this, the cement is going to? <laughs> Leave all these nonsense people who are talking rubbish. He said, no, what are you doing with your tithe? No, it's not your business. Your business is to give, walk away. How many tax have you paid? Do you go to ask the president, what do you do with my money? Can you meet the president? Your wife, you sleep with her and everything came out inside of, you brought everything, <laughs> including the yama yama, the ones who have infection, who is cheating, 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 giving the innocent wife infection. Do you tear her stomach? To know where your semen went to. Don't you just leave it for nature? If she gets pregnant or it just goes. 
have sex. There are things you don't investigate that will cause you pay. Huh? Are you getting what I'm saying? Pay and get out. Let the next person pay. Poor people are the ones shouting, Damn me, you're dead! That is not! They are very poor, so they want you to be poor. <laughs> eh? I've never seen a poor man who wants everybody around him to be rich. Lie, lie. Lie, lie to lie, lie. That poor man would want you to remain in his level. Are you getting what I'm saying? No poor man will ever say, Hey, go out rich. I'm here waiting. If you go, come and help me. No, lie, lie. They would want you to stay with them in poor fatty. Be careful of who you are listening to. Well packaged people on the internet it does not mean physically they are rich. Let package is stop deceiving us in this country and Africa. Huh? We have the tightening of five years, two years, and the tightening of ten years. So go and find how long you can wait on God. I want to tight for two years. Father, my tightening is of two years. The make of increase. Then now, Abraham started his tithing with two years covenant. He gave to God in two years straight without expectation. And the result, the first result was God said, as much as you can see. He went into five years. It looks like as what as, what as you can see happened, happened. Five years time, they became real he increased in his tent boom god made him a father of nation are you getting what i'm saying if titan was calm then stop singing abraham blessings are mine are you getting what i'm saying if if tithing is a scam, never you open that dirty mouth to sing Abraham blessings. They are not yours. Abraham tithed and you took by your confession. What are you doing? Why don't you do the same? Hmm? I don't have a church. So, <laughs> what am I preaching for? For who to come and pay tithe? I'm only telling you what is the truth. Listing and you are blessed. Mm? Tight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Man of God, how do we tight? Well, I understood what you're saying, but how do we tight? I'll tell you. Hey, how do we tight? Sorry, when do we tight? Man of God, I've heard all you have said, but man of God, when do we tight? Which season do we tight? <laughs> Should I tell you? I'll tell you. When do we tight? I'll tell you when you should tight. A. When things are difficult. <laughs> when do we tight? A. When things are difficult. Why should we tight when things are difficult? Because things will never be better. And things have never been better. Eh? Things have never been better. Before I was born, story, story, story. Once upon a time, time, time. <laughs> Tortoise trek from Nigeria to America. How many years? Sir... Everyone have died. <laughs> they didn't know if the tortoise got there or he got old and stopped on the road. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Huh? He said, when things are better, I'll start tightening. Like, like, you see things tight. When do we tight? When things are tight. Tight. 
Man of God, when do we tight? When things are tight, that's when you should tight. If not, things will start getting more tighter. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, it has never been good. He said, when the economy gets better, lie, lie. No matter the country that is listening to me, there is no country that is getting better. We keep moving from worse to worse to worse to worse. First generation, gone. Second, gone. Third, my friend, the best time to tight is when things are tight. Tight. Are you understanding me? Things can be better. Tight when things are difficult. When do we tight? When things are difficult. Because things never get better until you make step. B. You tight when people speak more against it. When should we tight? Tight. Now everywhere is talking about tight is a scam. That's when you should tight. Because the Bible said when a matter is so intense, know that there is a symptom of truth in it. When things looks like everybody's talking about it, this one say tight, this one say tight. You can just know that God hand is in tight. Just know there's something about tightening you need to learn. Are you getting what I'm saying? When people complain to me, hey Bell, this character, this one, this one, this one. I tell them, sorry, oh, this thing. <laughs> now my father, people won't fight me. Oh. God forbid. I consciously work on it to change. Everybody is condemning a person. As a believer, that's when you should love the person. Don't run away because people spoke bad about one person. He said, let's go. Let's know what is this person. Let's go and know this particular person. Let's go and know this particular. Don't judge and run away. He said, this time, this I shouldn't pay. Let me pay and see the result. That's when you should tight, not when you should leave it. Because that moment you walk away from what should have blessed you, it will take you another years to come back. Hmm? You tight when people speak more against it. Hmm? God uses the foolish things to confirm the wise. Everyone who is fighting against tight is only reasoning. That the men of God are using it to buy private jet is a lie. Most of the great men of God are established. Esther, black. Esther, broke. Later, what happened to Esther? Established. Great men of God have also got into businesses, contracts. So they think every money that comes to them to for jet talks about people's tight. Have mentality to know that these people up there are not just collectors. They are investors. A great man of God in this nation sells engine of helicopters. <laughs> in this Nigeria, a great man of God sells what? Helicopter engines. Rolls Royce. He sells helicopters, their engine. In how many millions? In how many millions of dollars for new chassis, Rolls Royce, helicopter engine? That's the business he does. So he can come at every day and say, ah, keep your money, don't die. That thing is giving him money. <laughs> and you, you follow him and go and talk. Don't die, don't die. And your members stop tightening. <laughs> you will know the difference between Shaggy Promas. And Banza Pro Mass, iPhone 20. <laughs> he says private jet engines. They are, this product of their engines are Rolls Royce. These Rolls Royce engines are like $5 million, $2 million, $10 million for engines. 
and you follow him and shout, Don't pay, don't pay, don't pay, you're tight. We don't need your tight. And everybody stop. Hunger will kill you. <laughs> so the reason why they hate pastors who are so rich, they think that everything in their life has to do with tight. You that think so should have sense to know that those people are what? They are travelers, they are exposed. So they know businesses they can invest. Even churches invest in business to grow. The age has come, we've come, gone past that part. We are, it's only tightening. Church depends on. If church trains you in school, won't you come back to appreciate the church? Are you getting what I'm saying? When do we tight? See, the moment you start having income. The moment you start having income, that's when you should start. Which type of income? Hundred dollar, you tight. Fifty dollar, you tight. The moment for tightening, or when you should tight, is when you start having what income. D, when you start having family, is also also the time to also start tightening. I have family. The things I had. There is no food. No, there is no food. Hey, that's when you should tighten. You are tightening for the family as a man. Tight. Hmm? That's when you should tight. When do we tight? A. When things are difficult. B. You tight when people speak more against it. C. The moment you start having income, start tightening. When you start having family. Also start, even keep tightening the more. That's the. Now, man of God, you said it. That's clear. Where should I tight? Eh? Some people tweet the same thing we are talking. They came online. They didn't think that we are talking important thing. I should leave my preaching to talk, answer her. Where do I call? I should not leave everybody and call you or talk to you. This is a problem in Africa. <laughs> everybody should pause for your own thing to be taken. My friend, Tinko, where should I tight? Number one, tight in your local church. Where should I tight? Tight in your local church. Start from there. Number two, where should I tight? On a fruitful what altar? Are you getting what I'm saying? On a fruitful altar. Don't tight where things are not flowing. Tight where the miraculous is happening. Number three, where should I tight? Tight where you have what? Spiritual support. Where should I tight? Number three. Tight where you have spiritual support. Not when you tight in a place where you can't talk to the man of God. You call, 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 call. You could follow protocol. You can't even see him. No. Eh? Tight where you have spiritual cover. The, mean, the man of God covers you spiritual. Tight there. Not you tight somewhere else. Some people will tight in big churches and come and be stressing me in my small church. <laughs> eh? Is that not wickedness? I'm your spiritual houseboy. Stop that nonsense. They tight in big churches in great men of God's hand. And they come to meet me. And they say, man of God, how is this one going to look like? And God will tell me, tell him or her to go back. So we had a tight head and ask the man who took it. Hmm? You can't be a user of men. No. It's only God who is a user of men and a blesser of men. Huh? So we are you should tight. Number four. Who you believe God in. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where should I tight? Is a man you believe God. That's why you should tight. Praise God. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason for Titan. The reasons why you must tight. What are the reasons why you must tight? Number one, it provides God's house. It provides for God's house. That's why you must tight. It provides for God's house. Why you should tight? The reason why you must tight, number one, it provides for God's house. You go to churches, you see ACs. You see big generator, you see fueling, you see diesel. Eh? You see how the place is well beautified, painted. That's why you should tight. You can't go to an unconducive place to serve God. Can you go to where they are shitting in public? They go to the toilet, you see in the street, they are pooing everywhere. That's why I now stand and say, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And people stand where their shit smelling everywhere to serve. Have sense now. Does that make you the best righteous man? It doesn't. It makes you stupid. Because you only want to make other pastors look foolish. So you went somewhere to stay. Say this is where we are. We don't collect tithes. You see? And we are real. That's, that's only proof that you are fake. So the reason why you must tithe it provides for God's house. It provides for God's house. Number two, the reason why you must tithe, it's telling God you trust Him. Why I must tithe is to tell God, I trust you. That's why I tithe. I trust you. That's why you tithe. By trusting him. By tithing. Number three. Why you must tithe. Why you must tithe. It creates what? Margin in our life. For God to feel. It creates what? A margin. Mm? For God to feel. That's why we must tight. It creates magic for God to refill. Number four, why you must tight? It reminds me that I'm not my source. Man of God, why must I tight? He's telling me that God is my source. A wife that does not give a husband money when he needs it. Why would that same husband give you money when you don't have? <laughs> Let's use your family as, a, as an instance. You hate giving your children money as a man. But your wife keeps struggling, giving those kids money to go to school. As a man, I'm disciplined. I can't give to them money. Just like that. Da -da, da -da. You are barking like a bulldog. As a man, say that's it. You are barking. I can't give my children money. No. They will work hard. <laughs> that's stupidity. The day the child grows, becomes financially buoyant, he won't give you to. He will give his mother that you are calling foolish today. And by that time, you will now say it is the mother who is dragging the children to her side. Not knowing you used to be stupid in those days of the growth of the child. So that's the greatest mistake of fathers. When I'm not giving you money for anything, you're going to work hard like a man. Nonsense. Are you working hard as a man? You're working hard as a man. You give birth to me. You didn't have a helicopter. <laughs> My friend, give your spouse money if you have. If you have money, just keep giving your wife. The day you don't have and she has, she'll remember the days you've been giving her and she'll give you. That's how it is with Titan. Are you getting what I'm saying? It reminds God that you are not the source. 
So if you give to your wife, if you give to your children, it's to remind yourself that the reason you are working is because of them. That's why you are working. It is because of them. So give them money. The day you don't have, they remember how you've been giving them money in every practical, in every process. They will never forget you. If they give their mother fifty thousand dollars, they will give you as a father forty-five or fifty thousand. Are you getting what I'm saying? But not when you are stingy, you want to reap from your ID so. Give them. Open business for her. Give her money. Give your children money. Children's day. Did you give your children money? You didn't give. <laughs> but you want them to grow. When they remember Father's Day, they should give you. You're a thief. Give them money. Invest. That's why you are working. So when it comes to God, proving that you are not the source, you are telling him, God, I give you my tithe. That's to tell him, oh my God, I'm going to give you back. Hello? Poverty mindset are all over internet. Ah, that is scam! It is only scam because you are too stingy and poor. Some of you will still marry those people though. Your life is old. a man that can't trust God who is not seen to give. Is he you is seen, he'll give. My friend, why you must give God? <laughs> Number five. It connects my money to kingdom purpose. Why I must give my tithe is because it connects what? Kingdom purpose. What is kingdom purpose? The Bible said the kingdom of God. God shall be spread abroad. Shall be what? Spread abroad. How does it spread abroad? By witchcraft? No. By helicopter? Yes. Booking a flight? Yes. No, they cannot go with flight. Let them go with bus. Is the bus free? No. Would they use fuel? Yes. No, they shouldn't go with bus. They should go with motorcycle. Paddling the motorcycle to go with motorcycle is it by leg? No, by fueling? Yes. No, motorcycle is too expensive. It's extravagant. Let's use bicycle. The bicycle are they eating to paddle? No. Would they get there? No. Would they die? Yes. Why? Hunger. Two. Bicycle can't carry load. <laughs> Would they trek? Yes. Would they go? Yes. Would they come back? No. They will die. Why? Their enemies caught them. They couldn't run. <laughs> I lie on head them. Thank you, church analyzers. They are many. Daddy Freeze came 20, 2016 in Nigeria. He said, Daddy, stop. The moment he finished spreading that false news, Nigeria went into the third stage of poverty. <laughs> Nigeria became poor. He said, He came to tell you the truth, and we became poor. What that makes that? Is that a truth? It's not a truth. Anything they tell you that makes people poor is not truth. What will bless you shouldn't stress you. What should bless you shouldn't what stress you. So it connects my money to kingdom purpose. Kingdom purpose, the growth, evangelical work, invitation of other men of God to come and listen to the word of God. Number six. It gives my job internal what significance. Why I must pay my tithe? It gives my job internal what significance. My job can't be shaking. Lie, lie. Never. Lie, lie to lie, lie. <laughs> my mother called me. He said, but one woman, a muffin, she's disturbing me. I said, mommy, oh, wow, wow, wow. Which one that? Hey, Bell, if this, if this woman do, they sack me, man. Don't finish. <laughs> and I'm carrying the family. I say, yes, so. I say, ah, Florence, are you paying your tithe? She say, man of God, I did pay. <laughs> Praise God. That's how I relate with my mom. That's so sweet. I say, Florence, did they pay your tithe? She say, man of God, I did pay. <laughs> I did pay. If you happen, I don't pay again. I say, okay. 
in the morning when you go put the phone i said be the first person to go my mom put the phone on last speaker when she got to the office i said you devil in the office that is disturbing the woman of god mrs flores woman listen to me if i be a prophet and the reason of her obligation monthly i command you sack The woman came to work after the prayer in 15 minutes. Everybody have landed. What happened? I tell you. The manager said, Come, come. Why are you so in my dream? Eh? He said, In my dream, just now, 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 now. Why coming inside? I just said, Let me just rest. Three minutes dream I had. I saw you. Fighting people in this office, stabbing them with knife. Hey, you want to kill people? And my dream, my revelation, I don't take it for joke. You are sacked. <laughs> Two man was sacked out of the office. Huh? It's because you don't know how to do it. It's up my time, but I still lose my job. No, remind God. The Bible said, Command me with my word. It didn't say cry. A crying Christian to God is a primary school servant. He said, I pay my tithe. He said, Who sack me? A bastard. Come on, get out of this job in the name of Jesus. Before seven days, they lose their own job and they put you. You think too much. You get attracted by, I hate emotional people. Though. I hate, I walk away from emotional people. This thing is bad. Stop it. Say no. He says love. Nonsense love. And that thing created a space where it wanted to harm someone. What will you do? Won't you walk away? Don't be emotional about life. If not, you won't go anywhere. Face the fact. Why being emotional? Every little thing, you are so emotional. My friend, face the fact. If most of you face the fact in your family, you won't divorce. It's because you hide behind emotion. You hide behind emotion. That's why you get every relationship wrong. <laughs> if you don't change your marriage, marriage is the last place for you to change your character. If you don't change the marriage, where would you change that? Praise God. So it gives your job a significant what? Internal significant. Number seven, why you must pay tight. It transforms your money into a seed. The reason why you must pay tight is that it transforms your money into a seed. Your money is not a seed. When you tithe it, it not transforms it into a seed. What does I mean? What do I mean? I'm waiting at the talk. English teachers. All I'm saying is that you are investing in the kingdom of God. A covenant years of fasting and prayer will give you what you want. A covenant years of tithing will give you a relevance you never thought about. So you must what? Transform my seed, my money into seed. Number eight, why I must tight? It breaks self-reliance of my heart. Self what? Reliance. Though I'm an independent woman. I don't need any man in my life. Shake bone. But you are sleeping, you are holding pillow. <laughs> Nonsense human being. I'm so independent. I don't need anybody. But you are dying, you are making call. Why are you calling for help? <laughs> Die now. The reason why you pay your tithe, it breaks self reliance. Knowing that you are, it's not all about you. Your heart is broken for God. Not to be self dependent, but to be godly dependent on Him. Let your heart to not go back. Let your heart look up to him. Hmm? He said, break self what? Reliance of your heart. Look up to God. Not 
I don't have any man's time. It's my money. I do what I like. You will die when it's time. <laughs> Not when you like, no. At that time, you will die when nature comes. Because when you were doing with whatever you like, you didn't think of another time coming. Be wise. The Bible even advises you be wise like serpent. <laughs> be wise like the devil. You, you say you know too much. Number nine, why you must tight? It lets everything else in my life know that God is first. God is your priority in everything. It makes you to prove that God is your priority. Your family is not your priority. God is your priority. So tithing is a priority that you are giving it to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Tithing is a proof that God is your priority. Number 10. It protects your future. Prosperity. Titan, why you must give your titan is that it protects your future prosperity. Titan protects. Abraham gave and gave and gave. Even Isaac never lacked. Everywhere Isaac went to dig or dug a hole, water comes out. Why? God. Elijah carried Elisha everywhere. When he prays, God answers. Why? He tightened with his master, Elijah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Number 10, which I said it protects my your future prosperity. Hmm? Titan is not an act of generosity. Titan is an act of obedience. Well, let me help the church and be giving them the church. Let me help you too. He will keep suffering. You can't help the church. The church will help you. Titan is an act of obedience. Huh? This topic long ago. The topic long. Why do people talk against tithing? Man of God, why is it that they speak against tithing? I'll tell you. Why they talk against tithing? Number one, church abuses tithe. They use the church fund for necessary things. A man of God who is buying a cars every year from the church account is not wise. So they will attack him. That's why they condemn the church. People are also looking. Are you getting me? Why do they talk against tithing? Pastors abuse it and people are watching. Number two, unplanned administration. You see the administration stealing money, pushing money from one place to the other. If they say cheers are two two thousand, they will write three three thousand. That's why people speak against tithing. The abuse, the administration, unplanned administration just waste money. Number three, mismanagement. Miss what? Management. Everything you just buy, you fix. You just buy a new one. Instead of you to fix the new old one, continue with it, you just feel to upgrade. Church does not need those nonsense. He said, let's use 2024 drum set. You don't need it. Leave that one that is there since 1997. Leave it. If it's TS, let the member see it that is torn. Then someone will now come and say, let's buy a new one. What? One million dollar. That's why people insult Titan. They disagree. Eh? Mismanagement. Church boss. You don't need to sell church boss. They don't sell church property. 
Change the engine of the old bus and put new engine. Let it work. There's no need buying new bus and selling the old one. You want to buy new bus? Buy new bus. Add it to the old one. Fix the old one. The church is not a waster of money. We are the blesser, not the waster. Fix it. Don't condemn me to buy a new one. If you say you must do it, take the old boss to another church. Invest it. So as a C2, you as a church, every church, genuine church, must sow to another church. No need to collect. <laughs> you to get blessed by giving. Why they talk against tithing is jealousy. People are so jealous that the church is growing they, because they see the pastor getting clean and mostly the pastor's wife is shining and maybe you toasted the girl before she married the pastor she, she disagreed so you will condemn their church <laughs> you say don't mind that girl Man. she be they do a shower before the pastor married her. shut up lie lie it's jealousy that's why they talk against titan they are jealous they feel they live by their tight they feel the pastors live by their tithe. So if they stop paying tithe, the pastors will not come down to your mentality, to your kind of poverty. No. It's jealousy. So don't think if I talk the pastor own to, I will not talk your own. Jealousy. That's why they talk against tithing. The other pastor in South South that talks about tithing is because he's no more relevant. So he said, there's no tithe. So that everybody will focus on him. But at the ending of the service, you say contribution. On a moment, never too much. You say, don't die, don't die. When they want to close, camera off, they now said, please, let's contribute. <laughs> I know they are, church, they are thief too. Huh? If you're that church is thief, you, you, are, you, are, you are the most thief. Huh? He said, there is no time. Anything you see, thief it. <laughs> Anything. There is no time. Anything you see, thief it. Church wants to close. Camera. The off camera. He said, we want to contribute. Where does church generator comes from? The fueling. The diesel you buy. Where does it come from? The cleaners, this machine you bought, we are the easy cleaning the church rug. Don't you pay the administrators? No church wants to, no member wants to be a worker there. And to do, nine use. So, because you want to stay relevant, you have to condemn other people's what continuation of blessings to make your own look better. It only shows how stupid you are. Weak people do the opposite of others. Weak people do the opposite of others so that they will get the people will get angry. Me do the opposite of me. I lie. If it works for you, continue, but you won't last. <laughs> eh? There's no time. Anything you see, teeth it. That's the kind of message he's coming with. Praise God. Mm? Why they talk against titan is jealousy. Eh? You have achieved everything in ministry. You have an estate, a very mighty estate that gives you billions of naira. You now come to condemn Titan because you feel the younger generation shouldn't build their churches. <laughs> Some of them are answering my name like me. Sometimes I used to ask them, Who gave them my name? Maybe. We told the whole state prosperity everywhere. You now got a revelation <laughs> because you want to stay relevant. No, you have an old prophet. Old prophet have nothing to preach. They only talk about people. Number five, why they talk against tithing? Anger. The reason they talk against tithing is anger. And anger. They are just angry for no reason. They are just angry. 
anger. Very angry people. Are you getting what I'm saying? Huh? In the moment of COVID, those days of COVID, Winners Chapel opened 10,000 branches. I was one of them that followed in the missionary work. <laughs> Redeemed, opened like 5,000. In COVID, where was the money coming? When God is increasing his church, he does not need givers. He provides givers. In COVID, money entered into the church. Whoop! In COVID was the first time I owe fifty thousand dollars. In COVID, I'm not a church pastor. I don't have a church. They called me from house to house. I was in Kenya. I was preaching from house to house. I said, Jesus is good. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> when I go, they give me one thousand dollar. Jesus did it for you. Four thousand dollar. Where was it coming from? God is not looking for givers. If he wants to do his thing, he brings givers. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you are privileged, take it as an opportunity. Anger. That's why they speak up against tight. They say it's only one. But you go to the club. Listen, all of you, you go to the club, you buy a zoo. You buy a zoo, one thousand dollars for a zoo. You buy a zoo. If you buy a zoo, everybody drink and high. You buy Hennessy for five hundred dollars. Hennessy can be bought for two hundred dollars, but the club sold it for five hundred. So the owner is profiting three hundred dollars. You are not angry that unbelievers, the unrighteous, are rich. Why Christians are poor? He said, go there, you, you accumulate their wealth. When God now say, bring to the church for the church to be rich, you now call it scam. And tomorrow you see your children suffer, go through consequences of life. You say it is an enemy's work, not to God. You need sense. You make the rich people, the club owners to be rich. You make native doctors to be rich. You make courtism to be rich. Occult, school children that are in different fraternity. That is called fatality. I don't care about fraternity. You make them rich. You buy guns. You give them money. You give them good clothes. You tight into your violence. When it comes to the things of God, you now say it's a scam. Scam will kill you and your generation. It's because devil sent you. Not everyone will have revelation to know that the devil sent him. You just open your mouth and talk rubbish. That's when you know the devil have sent you. Don't pay your tithe, but don't come online and talk rubbish and say, Tithe is scam, you're a devil, your generation will die. On a moment, too much. You listen to unbelievers, then you should listen to believers. You were born in the church. You were brought up from a responsible home. Social media came, washed away everything they have taught you about God. You say God is a scam and you want to progress. How will you progress? This are generation are the most suffering generation ever. So much graduates, no more jobs. So much graduates, no jobs. So much talent, nobody to support them. You can't kill the church and expect the economy to grow. You can't destroy Barnabas. You can't destroy Paul to rub it on Peter and grow. You can't. The church of God is a major role in the kingdom of God in this earth. Shut the hell up. You don't have money, keep your money. You don't have job. Don't tell people not to pay tight. You're a descendant of the devil. 
666 is not where they write it on your head. 666 is not the mark. It is what you speak. It is what you believe. It is what you accept. Okay, stop paying tight. Is the country good? Stop touch. The, night, the country will be worse. America saying, God, we do not trust anymore. How do you see America today? Are they succeeding? No. Is the economy good? No. America don't tell you they are owing in billions. Talking nonsense. Americans don't tell you. They deceive you. Americans are owing billions. Who told you they are debt free? Da, they are not debt free. Americans are owing. Some of them have not been paid. Their workers are not paid. Most Americans are not paid. Now, I'm talking, go ask them. I'm talking nonsense. Say Africa is the most corrupt. Who told you? Ask American people who tell you the truth. They took away God from their country. Okay, somebody said 30 trillion plus dollars. So they are owing more than everybody in Africa. But you condemn your country, you judge your president, you talk stupid, talk about the church of God, you are stupid. Don't pay your tight, keep it. The church is rich. <laughs> I wanted to be serious. Let me laugh small. <laughs> That's not me. But there are some things you need to have sense. I can't be directed by one, one stupid person on social media. Show me the proof to your life before I tell you who I am in your life. American, they are owing. You, you come, you condemn your own in praise America. Some people are from Nigeria that became citizens of the United States of America, but they condemn their country. How stupid! How can I even follow such people? I can't follow a woman who condemns her own country and accept the American country because she's not a citizen. One day, two, you will deny me <laughs> and accept, it, accept another man and knock the man. When I come from office, I catch both of you knocking. Nonsense. Who does that? Rebera. What do you mean? Don't let people come on social media to deceive you. Let them show you your evidence. Huh? Let them show you evidence before you believe them. But you believe everybody you just see on social media. Get sense. Are you getting what I'm saying? Tithing is an act of obedience. You are not helping. Your tithe cannot help God. It's just an obedience. Wait. I don't have a church. Cannot stress me. This country cannot stress me. I'll drink my tiger nut. What do you mean? Eh? You can't stress me. I'll drink my tiger nut. What do you mean? Who does that? Orambe, as they say it in Bin Orambera. Who would they do any? You go see any? Come, this this year I'm ready to carry bottle for God to. Open. <laughs> He said, you don't pay this guy will post your head. Come on, pay. He said, Moss. <laughs> Thank you. I must laugh. <laughs> and that's I'm ugly. And I'm like, hmm, yeah. come and laugh. I'll laugh. Hmm? The reason why they talk about Titan is poor mindset. Poor mindset, fellow. You see, people talk, try to freeze all of them. Poor mindset, poor, very poor. So they think you're tightening. The people who tight are not the people you are seeing physically in church. The main people who tight, you don't see them in church. 
Most of them are offshore workers. Most of them are presidents. You don't know. Most of them are chief of staff. These are governmental officials who understand the place of sacrifice. Not you who is cheap or mindset. You serve the devil, you will still tight. Wasn't I one of them? We suck blood. We we'll go give them a blood. It's tight. If you can't suck the blood, you will look for money. You will bring the money. People who go for the assignment will go and suck the blood and bring. Your money is involved. If you are not with God, then you are with the devil. Don't say, everything is free. He gave you free. Lie. That's in the place of gift. Won't you have the gift? Would the gift die of hunger? As I came here and I said, one on one, two hundred dollars. People are fighting me. He never said he go fight tire. All right, bro. These four phones that are in my front, video ring, have a Wi Fi route here. Just to subscribe it is two hundred and something thousand to the mass direct. And you're telling me it's free. Who, if you freely I receive, freely I give you, go collect your own. <laughs> collect your own. It's free. That's why you want to abuse it. Everything is free. We abuse it. Free thing is he finish. Poor mindset. That's why they speak against Titan. Hmm? Number seven. Why they attack Titan? They, they want to stop the growth of the church. It's the growth of the church. When everybody stops giving to the church, the church falls. Then the devil will not rest. Say, hey. Now let's see how they will succeed. It's because they want to close the church of God. If they stop this evangelical missionary work, this, the growth of church will stop. Now some of you say this man of God is only talking about Old Testament. I'll show you New Testament. We are God. Spoke about it. Hmm? In the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 23, Jesus rebuked the church. He said, You talk more. You talk more of tithing, but you forget the part of justice, grace, or mercy, and faithfulness. Jesus never said, don't pay your tithe. Jesus condemned. He said, every time you talk more of tithe than the most other things that are also important. Matthew 23, check it, it's in your Bible. So Jesus said, no, tithe is not the only thing we should emphasize. Justice. Faithfulness. Emphasize about justice. Emphasize about faithfulness. Not tithing only. That's where Jesus rebuked him. Jesus never said, don't pay your tithe. He said, that's me. He said, you hypocrites. <laughs> he called the church pastors hypocrites. Don't talk only tithe. Talk about justice. So some people say, Jesus never talked about tithe. He rebuked them every time they talk about tithe. He said, like other places that are also what? Important. Faithfulness, mercy, justice. We lack all those things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Jesus never said, don't tithe. Show me where he wrote it. He only said, stop talking about tithing too much. There are other situations, faithfulness. The church must know faithfulness. The church must know justice. The church must know fear and mercy. Hmm? Live tightly. Talk about that. Is. Are you getting what I'm saying? But Jesus 
never condemn Titan. In the book of Luke 18, verse 12, New Testament to New Testament. Luke 18, 12. Fasting and prayer can't replace tithing. The Bible said, yeah, he said in every week, I, he said what? I fast for two days in every week. True? And I also pay my tithe. You get my point? That's the scripture. He said, I fast two times in a week. And I also pay my tithe. Luke 18, 12. The New Testament said, Tithe to me. The Old Testament. Bible come out now. The Bible made the Old Testament useless. If they quote Malachi, that's why you say I will never quote Malachi 3. Have you ever seen me quote? There are other scriptures apart from Malachi. Malachi emphasized it, emphasized on it very well. So I can't put Malachi. It's everyday preaching. So I have not called Malachi 3. I'm using other scriptures to prove to you Malachi is not the only place. God spoke about it. Some people say, it's only Malachi. It's only Malachi. Don't read the Bible to fight. Read the Bible for understanding. Study to show yourself approved, not to prove that you know. Eh? The things in the New Testament, the titan, in, the titan part in the New Testament, in the book of Luke 21, verse 1 to 4, there is a story of a certain widow the rich gave their tithe, and this widow gave her tithe from the small. It touched Jesus. He said, among you all that are rich, this woman's own is more touching. Why didn't Jesus make her rich? Did Jesus now say, I made you rich from today? He said, this woman's tithe is from her heart. So Jesus knew about the tithing. He saw the truthfulness in it. Everyone must not be rich. Everyone must not be poor. There must be poor. Even when Jesus comes, say, follow this step. You say it's a lie. There must be poor people in the land. Does everybody must be rich? Nah, lie. Everybody can be rich. There must be the difference between the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class. We have morning, afternoon, evening. We have the morning class, afternoon class, evening class. Don't say, nah. Tithing does not make you rich. Lie, lie. In the book of Luke eleven forty two, Jesus never stopped. He was rebuking that part of focus of tithing. This one now is Luke eleven forty two. I've got so many scriptures without Malachi. Study to show yourself approved. I sat down. I said, God, you said I should talk about Titan. What do I know about Titan? He said, pick your pen and book. I sat down yesterday midnight. He said, start writing. <laughs> and I saw an old man, an ancient man. He sat with me. I have two tables. I have two chairs here. I sat. He sat opposite. He said, would you write? He explained Titan. gave me scriptures. I didn't find it in the Bible. He told me the Bible. <laughs> Praise God. That's why I say I'm defining it to the in toto. Because God taught me. I came to teach you. <laughs> he says, Sita, your book and pen. He was talking to me about Titan. Let the people know the truth. It's not the real focus. But it's part of the commandment. It's part of the law. But Jesus didn't come to abolish it. Yes, this message is live on YouTube. Jesus said, that's not the focus. Titan is not only the focus. Faithfulness, mercy, justice. Let's talk about those parts. Every Sunday, Titan. Every Sunday, no. 
This part, let's focus on it. First fruit is the same. Praise God. In the book of Acts 20, verse 35. Please, I'll check it. Acts 20, 35. Sorry, I didn't turn my back at you. Acts 20, 35. I have showed you all things. How that's what? So laboring. He said, ye ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. He said, how he said. He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. If you are only receiving, there is a problem with you. Don't sing and say, God has favored me. My life he has he changed. No. Think you to give. You who give is much better than you will receive. Hebrews 7, 5, number 6 of the New Testament. We are going to talk about it. The law in the New Testament was what? Titan. Jesus came, but he's Titan is still a law. Jesus died for our sin, but Titan is a law. He didn't take it out. Hebrews 7 Listen, Hebrews 7, 5. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes. Listen, you know, New Testament. He said he had the commandment, so it's a law, to take tithes of the people according to the law. That is of their brethren. Though they come out of the what? The loins of Abraham. Titan is a law. Is written. Hebrews 7 5. Check it on your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a law. Jesus didn't take it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? Titan is a law. He said, God can't come down to take it. Hey, sir. You must give it to the man. <laughs> That's the anger. <laughs> now people now they chop my tight. My friend, then go chop her. Then go, then go chop her. Send me your tight. I go chop her. Eh? Bring the tights. <laughs> Let them chop it. Eh? Tighting is a law. It's in the New Testament. Do you see it? Hebrews 7 5. He said, From Abraham, <laughs> God kept it, He didn't remove it. You say, Pastor, I don't want chopping tight. No. God used to come down, carry it with his money, with dollar, naira, pounds, eh? all the whole currency, and take it to heaven. No, we will never too much. The Bible said, it is unto a man to collect it. You see, give him the money. With the fear. Eh? <laughs> Esther was black. Broke. Esther can't see money. <laughs> now, nah. Esther can't repeat. Esther establish. Hmm? 
<laughs> so have you understood now? Christians. Krigini. Christians. I'm not a Christian, I'm a believer. <laughs> Number seven. The law was never abolished. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. This is the last part, so we are going through it. Matthew. So that you say this man they talk, you know, look scripture. Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 17. Look at what it says. Stingy people. He said, neither do men light a candle and put it under a what? A bushel. But on a what? Candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Next verse. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Not your self-righteousness, your good works. How good are you? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. 17. He said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy the law. He had Jesus talking. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. He said, No. Or the prophet. He didn't come to condemn. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, Jesus never talk about Shut the hell up. You are too poor. That's why you analyze on things you can give and do front. Rich people give and forget. Poor people give and remain in that thought. It's just in this tight number thing use Bible to too tight. Eh? One cent dollar. <laughs> May God make your wisdom to be rich. Oh you think I'm lying? Matthew five seventeen. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy the law. I didn't come to destroy the prophet. Jesus never condemned the prophet. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, he said, till heaven and earth pass. He said, one dot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law. Till all be fulfilled the law. <laughs> Let your light shine, shine. Do not be hindered. Nonsense talk from people. Let it shine. He came. To fulfill, he didn't come to abolish because you are too stingy. That's how some men is. If their wife asks for something, they say, You know, the doctor said you shouldn't be you shouldn't be drinking wine. Wine is making your stomach. My friend, shut up, give your wife wine. <laughs> you see, the church they said we shouldn't be dressing the way my friend make your wife look attractive. You see. I don't like makeup. Women who make up, I will not marry women who used to make up. You are a very stupid man. But you are looking at one young girl in the street that used to make up morning and night. You open the window. You say she don't pass. Your crush, your street crush makes up. Your wife shouldn't make up because you are scared of someone admiring your wife. On a mumuno too much. My woman should be able to look more better than me. That what that's what makes me a man. But not every day, every day, every day, money, 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 no meal. <laughs> but at least that once you have, you dress, you look good. When I hold your hand and we walk, people say, Chai, this guy, that greedy guy, you see the kind of fine girl we carry. Everywhere I shoot at, bye, she's very beautiful. That's the kind of man I am, not carrying, making, walking. No. You get my point? As I am now, as a man, with the knowledge of God, with his knowledge, with his wisdom, understanding, his anointing, his power, and the prophetic, and the deliverance, and his healing, and his talk and do. And now carry one and make it. One church girl. <laughs> My brother, everybody will lay hand on me, lay leg, lay everywhere. Me, lie, lie, hot cake. <laughs> My no blind, no. 
my eye. No. And you think I now go to the church? Ta! Church we are. Church guests. <laughs> like, like people. Uh, I went to see my friend's place. Then they want my house. Church people. She'll be looking very hot. I'll say, baby, baby. And I'm like, oh, darling. Prophet honey. And I put them like, oh, darling. Oh my darling, prophet, have you eaten any of our shop? Go do food, make a shop. Eh? You're not marrying Maria, Maria Maka, long skirt, but you're looking at a woman with short skirt. Well, Nick Mark. Oh boy. You're not going to the other. Jesus said, don't look there! Don't look there! But you're looking there. Shady wine. Nonsense, Pastor. <laughs> Marry who you can look to. Don't marry in, in Kechi with long gown and be looking princess with short skirt outside and thinking that one is a prostitute. Meanwhile, the faithful woman you have is worst. <laughs> Me, don't, I'm not looker now. Do I look looker? Ah, go for good stuff. Good clean stuff. Somebody, me and she can stay, she can twerk for me. Uh -huh. You think it's only you who need such a lot of people? Who stay inside, who say, baby, baby, leave. He probably carry, say, man of God, what did John 3 verse 16 says? I say, you're very stupid. I'm with my wife. There is no church here. My friend, come on, get out. Hey, madam, come, 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 come. On the AC, off light. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, no, no, you go and lock the door. You are through the Bible and go and lock it up. Bram, 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 bram. Pass through the window, turn the other side. Church close. Come tomorrow. <laughs> hey, like, there is time for everything. You know. Come carry big Bible. They not touch you. Hello. Rabba, I must go for evangelism. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Can I go and preach first? When you preach, come you are tired. Before you preach, call it one. <laughs> one for the road. <laughs> My friend, on Sunday morning, before you go to church, call it one for church. <laughs> call it. When you call it, when she's walking, say exactly. I don't chop. I don't chop. She will not look at you. Mm, on Sunday morning, you're a sinner. Yes, I'm a sinner. <laughs> call it before you go to church. Six o'clock, call it. Early morning sex is good. So call it four, five, six. When you call it, she go and buy a fire cloth. Eh? Don't be too religious. You are not going to heaven now. Stay alive. Enjoy your life. <laughs> Stay alive and enjoy your life. Hmm? Tithes are received by mortal human being. Hebrews 7 8. By what? Mortal human being. Honor God with your first fruit. Proverbs 3 9 to 10. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, we have clothes. Also, I spark the chair. Huh? The benefit of a prophet. Do we have? Yes. But not the one you are talking. Benefit of Titan. Uh, benefit. Man of God, what's the benefit? Number one, he will open the windows of heaven. That's where I bring the Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. That's number one, benefit of Titan is opening of the windows of heaven. When the Bible said windows of heaven, he's talking about your business. The Bible said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it said, Ye shall what? 
Open the windows of heaven. He's talking about opening your business. Not opening window for money to come. No, he's talking about business. Let me say, say, shall open no. He's talking about business. So you must have business. Not job, but you must have what? Business. That part is talking about business. He shall open the windows of heaven. Business. It is only business you open and close. Are you getting what I'm saying? Open and close is business. It's not job. So as a man who pays tight, also have business. He will open the windows of heaven. Number two, benefit of tithing. He said the promise of his blessing, Deuteronomy 8.18. He said he has given you the power to make wealth. The power to make wealth is not stealing in the bank and they will not catch you. The power to make wealth is by putting your hand in anything and it prospers. That's the power to make wealth. People make 5,000, but the moment you get into the business, you make 5 million. That's the power to make wealth. People say 10,000 to do it, you. Yours is 10 million. The power to make wealth. Deuteronomy 818. Are you understanding what I'm, Are you understanding that scripture? Every day they quote it. You don't know it. That's why I'm breaking it down. Hmm? The power to make wealth is the hand to be a blessing. Number three. He said, there shall be no room enough to receive. So God is talking about expanding your business now. Which he said in the first one, opening of the business, which is the window. Every shop have window. So now, he now said what? There shall be no room enough. Your goose are so much. <laughs> All your goose are inside the shop. The shop is so filled. Are you understanding Malachi? 310. Because in those days, I told you God came, an ancient man sat down, I sat, he started teaching me. He said, in those days, the fruit and the things from the farm were filled in the house of God. The carica papaya you see today are given to people daily, those ones who sleep in the church. But the yams are being kept for festival seasons in the church. Have you ever understand that flow from different men of God? I'm coming with the light of God, not with the darkness. I'm not a teacher of doom, I'm a teacher of light. So what? It means expansion. There shall be no room enough. Your shop, no space to buy more goose. The profit is too much. <laughs> That's what he meant. Praise God. Hmm? Number four, benefit. God now said, I shall rebuke the devourer for your sake. So because you are tightening, they can confront you and your business. Every business have a devourer. He said these people, they are selling with juju. Eh -eh. You are not becoming a devourer. He said we protect you. It means I'll prevent you from loss. Either by theft, fraud, or sabotage, including setback. That was what that thing means. Devara. Devara is a setback. Devara is a theft. Is a fraud. Is a sabotage. Are you getting my point? That's what Devara is. Number five. He said, benefit, he will protect you. He will prevent you 
from your enemies messing you around. Through witchcraft or through other means. It's as you tight. I will what? I will prevent you from your enemies trying to mess you around. Have you ever seen yourself in a dream? You are naked and you are walking with people. That's the, the meaning of that dream is shame. Then God said, no, you can't be naked. That means you can't be disgraced. Praise God. Hmm? So, number six, he will deal with your vine, protect you from losses, from your business. He will deal with your vine and protect you from what? Losses. And give you what? Business and opportunities. That's the benefit. Number seven, nation shall call you blessed. What does that mean? Promotion. You are the only one people are talking about, like me, people are talking prophet Abel. That's promotion. Eight, tightening the benefit. He said he supports God's kingdom in the preaching to the world. Matthew 28 verse 19. That means as God's kingdom is growing higher, you too, you are growing. If the church you are serving is building, is growing, you that is a member, that is part of it, is also growing. Mm, number nine, it ensures what? Your need will be met in your heart. First, it said, I shall supply you your need, not your want. But this one, tightening brings what? Your desire, which is your want. Number 10, the benefit, tithing helps you to meet the needs of God, the budget of God. That's what it is. So when you tithe, God makes you a blessing. Hmm? When you tithe, God blesses you. God turns you to a project. To meet up church budget. Uh, another benefit of tithing. It gives you wisdom. Solomon said God. After all you gave me. He didn't say I don't have. He said his word was what makes those things sacrifice. He owes enough to give. But the one he is giving he said, after all, you gave me all this. I give back to you. God said, whoa, 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 whoa. So the benefit of tithing is wisdom. He said, wisdom is profitable to direct, not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying? The benefit of tithing is ideas. He said, I shall make the ideas, the wisdom of God flow. Every man is struggling to put up things together. You just go with a snip of a finger, twins are done. That's the work of Titan. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the work of Titan. Church has closed. Huh? That's the work of Titan. It gives you wisdom, ideas. Wisdom, ideas. The benefit of Titan is that God gives you a good humorous what? Science. He makes you a humorous man. Every giver is humorous. Am I trying to be a humorous man? No, I'm not. I am. Praise God.
So when you when you try the benefits, you become very humorous. Stingy people are always angry. They don't laugh. Stingy people don't give. They always they will give you. But givers are humorous. So that's one of the benefits. And benefit of tithing gives you the understanding of relationship. If you don't know how to give 10%, how will you know how to give love percent? You can't give 10 percent. How will you give love percent? You think talking on the phone for three hours is love. Both of you are jobless. <laughs> Hello? Over. Walking. Boom, boom. Honey, 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 honey. I want to see you, see you. I miss you, miss you, miss you. You not talk all the whole story. Hey. Both of you are jobless. Everybody's complaining that one to me, so it does not enter here. It goes there, it goes there. On the phone to talk. Three hours. To talk. What are we talking? Two hours. What are we talking? One hour. What are we talking? 30 minutes. What are we talking? Chat me. How are you? I say I'm fine. How is everything? You are not cheating. I'm not cheating. It's finished. <laughs> that time you are talking to me. 40 minutes. God would have used that time to give me a message of my life. The only time that can be good is when we should be talking. Is when the head is on the chest. <laughs> you can talk through chatting. Chatting is communication. Chatting must not be a phone call. Before Yejepo and Ibiome, and all of them became so great, were they talking on the phone for three hours? Ajeboye, let's leave at the way. Oyedebo, he, he spoke for his, his wife two hours. He became the very the richest man. You people should respect yourself with this relationship therapies. <laughs> communication is good. Chatting is communication. Talking is communication. Find the one the man likes more. Me, I like chatting. I don't like talking. Eh? Three hours, love talk. But you know they talk. And when heartbreak comes tomorrow, people want to die. Preacher <laughs> 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 hey, say, if he loves you, you find time for you. He doesn't have job. You know why? Women are looking for the same women who say they want attention, no. The same women who are telling you they want attention. They want attention, bro. Another man who is busy bringing the money. He said, don't worry, take the whole of your time. Take the whole of your time. Take the, I will wait for you. He has given them money. You, you have no money. You're only talking. <laughs> I don't want to be that kind of lover. I want to be that kind of a lover who gives. He said, honey, take the whole time. I will wait for you. You see how we are you see how we are fooling ourselves. You say women want attention, women want time. Give her one billion. She said, honey, take your time. <laughs> Study, preach, do anything you want to do. I'm waiting for you. You don't give her money, you now go. Two hours you are talking, three hours you are talking, four hours, she will leave you. Use that time. You have to talk too much. Make more money. Eh? Are you getting what I'm saying? Focus on your future. Destiny. Make money. Not love. Talk, talk for two hours. They'll still leave you. You'll still collect breakfast. Don't follow those phenomena. It doesn't work again. Those are in the Old Testament. The woman you are giving eight hours is using two minutes to cheat on you. <laughs> You are giving the woman six hours. She used two minutes to cheat. Then the man who used two minutes have money. <laughs> God, may I not follow everything on, on Facebook and TikTok? <laughs> eh? Six hours. She used two minutes to cheat. She gave you, the man gave her 100,000 naira. You, you are talking. He said, things are going to get better. 
Things are going to get better. Things are getting better. You are singing. Things are getting better. For the Lord is on the throne. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. You're not bent down. Things are getting better. The other guy. <laughs> that came from the back. Hello, baby. I know your toiletries are finished. Check your account. Eh? I just sent you $500. Oh my God, baby, do you just the two hours? They don't call you baby. <laughs> when will you lay a lesson? They have left you behind. They have left you behind. Where are you? Where are you? I want to come and specially tell you thank you. Can I come to your house? Now then they beg to come to your house. You wait and they talk for three hours, four hours, six hours. Oh yeah, babe, come to the house. To come and do what? To come and do what? I don't like all these things you are doing. You know? How can I come to you? Have you married me? I will not come to the house. You will not be disturbing me, disturbing me. But the one who gave for toiletries in a mood. Can I come? At least let me just come around, fix things for you, make sure you are okay, baby. The man never asks them out. You wait now. When I'm never leave all those things. They are nonsense. Go and make money. As you are looking for love, make money with love. Then, if the man, if the woman you are chasing is also chasing money, the dream will come together. Not you that is chasing the money. The woman is what is asking for the money. You will be broke. You will be poor. Eh? If a man loves you, the first thing he does is to give you what? Passport. You know why a man should do a passport when both of you are in a relationship? An opportunity can come. Both of you can go together. You must not marry before you go for the opportunities together. The moment you love her, give her international passport. Make do it for her. Give her the money to go and do it. Eh? Give her money to do her passport. Secondly, after the passport, find a way. Eh? Register a business with her name. If you do this major role, the day both of you break up, she will come back to you because you have a future. The other one only tell come out now, come out now, come and do what for your house. Then they give people second heart. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nonsense. Use your life and do better. Thing. Do international passport, register her business, give her driving license, teach her how to drive. Those are the basic things. Eh? Grow her spiritual life. With all these things you are doing, if she's not educated, put her in school. Forget if she will come out to disappoint you. That's not that's a local mentality. If she disappoints you and marries someone else, it's a proof that she was fake. And you know why? When she marries someone else, he she will also do another one, or the man will pay her back. You can never run from karma. You will be at the con no matter how you speak in tongues in one hour. If you dupe a man to marry another man, the man you marry will dupe you and use you and divorce you. After when you born four children, when your stomach are all out, artery all over your side of breast, your waist are the stretch mark, stretch mark. You will not take me like this. After all the you go through, you are an idiot. You disappointed someone who trained you in school. Karma will come. Onyala. They disappoint you after you train them in school. Don't worry yourself, my brother. Leave her. Cry. Clean your tears. You're a man. If the next woman comes back again, train that one. You are not a fool. You are gathering your investment. Your own children too, they will train them in school. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are crying. It's painful. Clean it. Move on. The next person come. Train. The genuine one will honor you. Years ago, I did international passport. 
or someone. I bought jam. She had driving license, me. I don't have. <laughs> Register company. That was the next process. But when they tell you, this thing, don't do it. I'll give you a story. A man called Michael. He's a good friend of mine. And his fiance. They were together. That's why if I go to the bathroom, I don't take nonsense. I put my phone on silent. I don't take it to the bathroom. Where I'm charring, I keep it separate. Michael used to tell his fiance. He said, when I'm taking my shower, allow me focus. You know people who take time to shower. My biological father takes up to 40 minutes in the bathroom to shower. I used to wonder what takes time. Until I began to grow up to know that it depends on how you want to do it. <laughs> Michael was showering. His wife, his fiancée, kept jumping on him. But when you want to shower, I leave you. I allow you. I don't stress pass. It went on. On that fateful day in the month of March 19. She did the same thing. You see why you should be so cautious of who you want to marry? Be stubborn with your fellow females. When it comes to the man that wants to marry you or both of you are dating, obedience is better. Listen, don't bring your stubborn head. It will end and say, after all, he never loved me. You were stupid not to obey. And Michael was in the bathroom taking his shower. She came in. And she did the same thing. The devil was at work. The transformer in that area, the bridge caught. And the earthen wire was disconnected from the transformer. From the lotation. And when her hand pushed Michael in the place of play, Michael now fell on the iron of the electric, of the winer, of the shower, and it was iron. The heater has no more eating wire. And the current from the life wire was a real one. Not that brr and leave you. And Michael was roasted because of the water in his hand. My good friend died on the 19th of March. Then, her body calm down. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah. He said, no. It's love. Nonsense love that don't take instruction. That love, I reject you in the name of Jesus. Any love that will kill me before my time. Fear. <laughs> that love died. Michael died. How many years ago? Today, princess married another man. She married another man. She had three good grown-up kids. One is, the first one is 14 years. The other one is nine. The other one is five. She remarried. Not that she remarried. That one was a fiancé. This one, now. She remarried. But you have killed someone else. If they tell you, and when I see her, I, I, ne I never, never, I can't forgive her. Let lie, lie. I forgive you outer word. Stop this thing. You say no. They leave you. He say it was never real. You did. You, you, they told to stop. You are angry. Are you not stupid? They say stop this thing. That's why every time I go to bathroom, I lock the door. Okay? <laughs> so that my village people will not come and push me to anything that will kill me. Even those iron in the bathroom, the moment your head hit it, you are gone. Be conscious of your everyday life. You will die by mistake. People will move on to wickedness. She's with a man. Three children. She's living her life. But she can't remember she killed Michael. 
Even Michael loved her more than the way this man she married now love. And I will not tell you as a man, this thing I don't like it. He say no, no. Everything you are serious. Everything you are. My dear, if I die, you go marry another person. <laughs> Women, if you tell the man, don't do this. He keep doing it. Your life is more important. Walk away. Disobedience brings death. Oh, that's dirty love. They are telling you stop. They are telling you, baby, you don't love me again. That's nonsense. Life is involved. You are talking about love when life is involved. You won't kill the only son. Someone that was hooking me, we were fighting. I said, come on, I fight with the fight. They hold me for neck. You won't kill me. I beg, I beg, stop. I don't like this nonsense. <laughs> Praise God. So without going too much, <clears throat> there are questions people ask. What about if you don't have a salary and they give you money? Do you have to tithe? Secondly, if you skip your tithe, can you double it the next day? These are nice questions. Somebody said, Prophet, divorce is not allowed only if she cheats. That's not a real talk. You don't wait for a wife to cheat before you divorce. Even in the same detriment of your life, you can divorce. Lie, lie. <laughs> to wait for cheating. They have stubborn women who will never cheat on you. But you see Shege, they will show you Shege. Your life will be a threat. Cheating is not the only thing that can make someone divorce. Chronic stubborn, chronic stubbornness. And you think it's your life, oh? He said, if you can't love me the way you, I am, go. They will keep going. He said, what is your take on polygamy? Am I the man to stop? <laughs> like, like polygamy is not a sin. Polygamy is biblical. But the Bible said, if you want, if you want to marry two, you must not have a responsibility in the church. You must step down. One wife, high responsibility. Two wife, be a floor member. So I begin to see people judging uh, your edochi and say, they say two wife is a sin. Where is it written that two wife was a sin? Even the people with two wives, they lived longer. <laughs> John Obo don't die. Carlos died. Emechi died. Uh, Sophia died. Uh, Ruben died. One wife. <laughs> I'm not saying you should go and marry two. The ones with two, they lived 80 years. You know, some of you are too religious. This is what I'm talking. I say, hey, this man of God is not real. Find out. Whatever you give to the first, you will give to the, to the second. The Bible said you must love them equally. You must not love the first more than the second. You must not love the second more than the first. If you buy a car for the first, you must buy for the last. If you can't buy the two at a time, don't buy for anyone yet. Eh? Holding this, three wives, the men stay 80 years, 90 years. You marry one, your life is a threat. They are waiting for you to die. They take your property. Do you know why they marry first and second wife? It's sexual satisfaction, sexual flavor. That's why they have. You understand? Should I tell you? I'll tell you. What do I mean by sexual pleasure? You have married a certain woman. That woman have no orientation of her stomach after giving you three children. The stomach is too big. Before, when the stomach was flat, both of you were lying down. Obstacle was not the stomach. Both of you lie down, you kiss well. But because now she have pot belly, because after giving you three children, you will not have to go like this before you kiss. But before you go like this, before you kiss, now you have to cough. That's for the olden days. They now say, oh, 
This one is flat, no hindrances. But now we are in the New Testament where we have flat stomach. You do exercise. But the women will still decide to keep that butt belly. The woman will still decide to keep that her section. Yes. Cut this part. Show it everywhere. After having three children, four children, as a woman go to the hospital, he said, doctor, close me up. Let that place be like sugar, honey. Let that place be sugar, honey. You stay in the hospital for three months or two months. They will give you medication. I can tell you local things to take, but no, go to the hospital. They will give you medication. That place will close like you never gave birth. You know why? You gave birth the first one. It's an elastic rubber God created. But the second time, it will not be fading and as an, as, as an uh, elastic. You gave thought. That's why some men, if they want their wife want to bond, they tell them, please, honey, I want you to do three, three CS. You know why? So that that part will be close. It will remain the way it, it is. Some men said, honey, do CS. Let that part be the same. Your pastor is too holy to tell you. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm righteous. I'm not holy yet. It's a gift he gave to me, so I'm teaching you. You get my point? So don't say, you know it all. You know nothing. Go to the hospital. Close up. Do exercise. Bring your stomach back to flat. Let your husband keep seeing you the way he met you. He met you. How did he met you? He met you slim. Remain slim. Your husband married you. You are slim. You born only one child. You became like a robot. Why won't you cheat? Huh? You cheat. He loves slim women. He married you slim. You became fat. You have a you have you are the worst women. Don't let me talk too much. Have they not left you behind? Your oath now, nah. mash. <laughs> What's in the gift power? No, the stress person. No, all these people and you people are taking power, power, power. You go get headache all night, but they get shiri shiri. Oh my god! So, glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. Man shall not live by abracabra. Hello. So. Eh? Problem there for who no one keep back her shape. Oh. If you don't go back to your shape, they will cheat on you. If I don't take it now and uh, I fall, they will say, yes, <laughs> it is his sin. His sin has brought him to judgment. Leave me with a cheat. It's just a cheat. What do you call me with a cheat? <laughs> As a woman, after four children, close back. Gays, homosexuals who have sex in the other hole. God gave them stick and who They prefer to become a who. When they stop being a homosexual because they pull on their part. So they go to the hospital to close up. Are you understand me? So woman, go and close up. 
Don't have four children and stay. Say the way my husband. That's how I am. That, that, let him manage me. Manage you. Then they manage marriage. Okay. Let's go to the next one. If I talk, I get plenty of things to talk. If you don't have kids, man will still cheat. <laughs> You've not been hurt. You have to be hurt. <coughs> ah. <coughs> what about if you don't have a salary and they give you money? Do you have to tithe? Yes. If they give you money and you're not working, they give you money, they dash you money. Pay your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you're not working and they sow a seed, they gave you money, they dash you money, inside that money they give to you so. And then I say, secondly, if you skip your tithe, can you be able, can you be, can you be able to pay it next month? You can do, it's called carryover. You didn't pay your tithe today. Why you didn't pay? Story, story, story. Pay it the other month. Can a Christian woman get married to a Muslim? Why won't you get married? These Muslims, are they not human beings? As much as he understands you, you understand him. Marry a Muslim. Marry an understanding Muslim. So that's it. But ask me based on this topic. Don't come and ask me your father's question. Another question. He said, one, Job suffered because he didn't pay tight. Is it true? Yes. If you vow to God that if God gives you a job, you pay your tight. And you don't pay your tight. Two years, five years. You start having issues in your job place. Number two, if you don't pay tight, you will not make heaven. True or false? It's true. If you don't pay tight, you won't go to heaven. I have the scripture here. That's where Adebo you saw it from. He said, This are law that can hinder you because this are law. That can hinder you from going to his promised land. So it can hinder you. <laughs> yes. If you don't obey the Ten Commandments, how will you go to heaven? It's a law. So don't just insult a man and say, How can a man say if you don't pay your tithe? It's true. He's here. I can open the scripture. It's by revelation. Hmm? You cannot pay tight interest. <laughs> you can't put God as a commercial businessman. You didn't pay today, you pay next tomorrow. Join it. Pay for the two months you didn't pay. Somebody said the Dubai prophecy of massive deportation. Of course, not plenty. Uh, you can carry over your tithe, but it doesn't make sense. Another question, Prophet, thank you so much for giving the opportunity to ask questions about tithing. What benefits do we have when we tithe? We have wisdom, we have ideas, we have what? Establishment, we have open of God's windows of blessing, which is business, and the expansion, which is branches. That's benefit. A lot of benefits are there when we tithe. He said, it's very complicated issue. Can I share my tithe among the less privileged? You can't share your tithe. You give your tithe to one altar. They don't share tithe. You give 25. You give 5. Yeah, give 5. No, you give your tithe to one church. You don't divide it. You can divide your prophetic seed, but not your tithe. Tithe goes to one church. That's the question I saw. Glory to God. <laughs> uh, any question about Titan? Any question?
Is that your question? Huh? Any question about Titi? Just say, don't say yes, just say it. Any question? There is no time. Anything you see, thief it. <laughs> That man should be arrested. Eh? Eh? That man should be arrested. When you are in Nairobi, we want to buy you Anyama Choma. Anyama Choma. I don't like eating it. Which one is uh, our gross income or net income? Uh, which one is gross income? <laughs> Economist Tinibu said, Oh, be. Oh, be. The Economist Professor. Okay, gross income. I don't understand any English, I don't understand. Uh, gross income okay before task okay somebody is asking for the scripture I will post it today you see the scripture is by revelation commandments can hinder you from not getting into heaven Gross income is before tax. Okay, thank you for telling me. Okay, gross income before tax. If your income is coming, as much as you are collecting, they are collecting tax. You come out of it. Come out what? Take out your tithe. Take out your offering. Every believer, listen to me. If you're a good giver, Every month when your salary comes, remove your tithe and your offering for the four Sundays. That's the best way to plan. You don't give your offering Sundays. You give your offering. You give your offering before Sunday by keeping it. You give by your gross, your gross income, not your net income. You we tithe by gross. We don't give by net. We tithe by gross. Hmm? You tithe from your capital, your business capital. Sorry, you tithe from your business profit, not your capital. Don't tamper the capital. Collect from the what? From the profit. Hmm? Don't tithe. Don't tithe from your capital. Tithe from your profit. Salary comes, take away your tithe, take away your offering. You keep your offering in an envelope for the four Sundays or church activities. You keep, you write offering first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday. If you didn't get to last Sunday, you put it for the other one. You come out, you remove your tithe and you remove your offering for the month. That's how it works. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Not on not on Sunday. You not do that is. Hey, this one is too big. You now put it back. You now look for the smallest number. You know what I mean? Oh, hey, hey, hey. The Lord is good. Oh. And you be the one to dance. The person holding good money is not dancing. He say, Thank you, Jesus, for giving me. You hold this small money. You will not dance. Oh, that Lord is good. You will not fold the money. God's money will not be folded. Hmm? God's 
God will deliver you people. So, this is a very good teaching. I've learned this. So, no other question.